Thank you. Oh, God, I feel like I need to get over wine. <laughs> um, now I wish I'd sort of spent a little longer to uh, prepare mine because that was uh, brilliant and mine's kind of uh, took, took as much time as I had at the time. So I did this about a week ago. I haven't really thought about what I'm going to say, so I apologise in advance. Uh, but let's see what my mindset was a week or so ago. Um, so who am I? I One of two sisters. Uh, me and my sister joined the police. She's still in the Met. We both agreed uh, at the end of 2019 when her husband died, we agreed that life was too short and that we were going to quit. I came back and quit. She's still in the mats. <laughs> um, but she loves it, so all's good. Um, uh, slave to one cat and two dogs. I've been told to stop mentioning it, but my ED fell down the stairs before I left the house today. <laughs> so I am a little bit, Ooh, but oh, God, is she all right? She is absolutely fine, I'm sure. And if she's not, it's the dog walker's problem, which is what I keep telling myself. I pay her a lot of money, so <laughs> frankly, she can get her to the vets. Um, so joined in 2007, loved it, absolutely loved it. Loved every minute of it. Minute of it. Um, had, oh gosh, stop clicking. Had an accident uh, about a year and a half after I joined and I broke my back uh, in two places, uh, L1 and T12 for detail fans. It was a little bit uh, uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> for quite a while, occasionally still is, when I have to carry heavy bags, uh, <laughs> suddenly it starts swinging. Um, but it, it actually worked out fantastically because I was in uniform, I was just doing the usual you know, crap that everyone um, has to do. And as a result of it, uh, I got put into a CID unit to keep me safe when I got back uh, to work because I was getting injured left, right and centre. Absolutely loved it, did really well and was asked to stay and never Never left again, basically, never went back into uniform again, which was fantastic until I hit the domestic violence unit. Um, <laughs> uh, so I hit the unit, the unit hit me, and the unit won. Uh, started to suffer quite lengthy periods of depression. I'm sure you, you, know, you probably all know exactly uh, the sort of thing that we have to deal with. So. After a while, and the, the lack of support in the job, I started to think, God, I just can't do this anymore, can't do this anymore. Um, so I started some side hustles. Um, Ta-da, this is the next thing. So first of all, I started with a partner's um, plants business, um, helping build that up. She was just sort of selling plants here, there and everywhere. And I, I, I thought it was a great idea. So I sort of took it from her a bit, started the social media side. And we built it into a really profitable little little sort of weekend business. We had, anyway, I shan't talk about it too much because my new <laughs> partner's here, so let's not reminisce about those days too much. But it was, it was a nice way kind of into business. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> this, is, this is where I should have prepared, isn't it, really? <laughs> so randomly selling plants, we, I ended up next to a, a guy that owned a vineyard, literally the next village to me in Leicestershire. There is genuinely, there's three in Leicestershire. Anyway, I shan't go into the vineyard talk, but um, he wanted to start doing vineyard tours and he found that uh, I liked to talk, uh, as I've been told. So he invited me down there to do vineyard tours. Um, so I started doing that. I learned about the vineyard, learned about the wine making process. I'm quite a fan of wine. Um, so it was fairly easy. And um, we did kind of various, I have been to stop drinking before I had to start talking and it didn't work. I wasn't listening. <laughs> Um, but it was brilliant and all of a sudden because I had free reign and I didn't really know what I was doing so I wasn't constrained by knowledge I was literally just doing what I felt like doing we had Easter egg hunts but for adults so we had gin hid around the vineyard it was absolutely brilliant um, and we did a 5k run which for charity which was just hilarious because vineyards are on a slope nobody realizes that until you're running up it <laughs> and having to do 5k up and down so I started to think and I was more and more anxious at work I was more and more kind of overwhelmed and tearful and exhausted at work but then when I stepped outside and I had a group in front of me and I was talking babbling on about wine and grapes and all sorts of stuff I was more and more and more comfortable and started to really sort of believe in myself a little bit more and then I hit another depression episode um, but I found while I couldn't walk into a police station without being a quivering wreck I could still go down the vineyard I could still sell plants to old ladies and I started thinking maybe this is me actually maybe Maybe policing isn't for me, because I'm not that rough to tough I'm not very good at fighting at all. I'm certainly not good at climbing, hence the broken back. Um, so I submitted a business interest and made it clear that actually the business is helping me. It's helping my recovery. It's going to help me. And it was refused. It was basically, you've been off sick. You can't, you can't run a business as well. Um, your first priority is less to police. At which point I just thought, oh, it really isn't actually. Um, so I quit. So Adam, my brother-in-law, died. We had this 
amazing holiday in Dubai. And we decided, right, we're both going back. We're both going to quit. I stuck to it. Um, and then COVID came along. <laughs> so I was like, oh, my God. So all my events um, just sort of went to... Just well, just got cancelled as everything did, but I turned back to the plants, which was amazing because all the garden centres were closed. Uh, so that kind of lifted me through, carried me through the whole period. Um, and then I started to think, what am I going to do after summer when people don't want plants anymore, and actually when the garden centres are back open? So I started tinkering with a play at home investigation game because despite like leaving the police and being very mentally unwell, I still love the investigation side. I'm still quite creepy in terms of wanting to find out about people and find out about crimes and you know delve into things so I started creating a, a play at home investigation game um, launched it in October so I'm less than two years into this whole thing um, launched it in October literally with a little bit of Facebook advertising I could probably teach you a thing or two Jamie <laughs> um, <laughs> and a Shopify shop and immediately in the first month it was four thousand pounds of sales and I went on to have ten thousand pound months consistently after that Thank you. I, I was looking at the computer literally every night, just watching the numbers um, add up. And, and of course, it was lockdown. I was on my own. I was drinking a lot because everyone was. And I was just like, oh, what, what's going on? <laughs> so it kind of it, it led to a little bit of a dispute because I was in a franchise um, to run events. So the franchisee was keen to wait for events to start again. I was kind of thinking maybe they're never going to start again because this is crazy. This is going on and on and on and on. So I left the franchise, started it alone. Um, a similar thing to what Mark was just saying, you know, if something's really crap um, and not to your benefit, uh, just leave, which so I left just twice uh, within the space of about four months. Um, and I, I haven't looked back. Um, I've now got four games out, uh, selling in America and Canada. I've never been to Canada. I, I want to go everywhere where my games have gone. Um, that's my aim. Oh, hello. I am still here. <laughs> have I hit my 15 minutes? No, no. Is that, is that a sign? <laughs> um, so... Yeah, basically, I've just been invited to sell at Walmart. It's, uh, it's not an easy process, but I'm very excited about it. <laughs> Thank you. All four games. So I'm, I'm like, oh, God, what, where's... Uh, and events. Oh, my God. I did an, uh, an event for Amazon. It's exciting to me. I know it's not exciting to anyone else, but it's a huge company. And I was just like, whoa, Amazon. Um, so I did a huge event yesterday, which is probably why I'm not going to be able to speak much more. <laughs> and why my words probably aren't making sense. So wins, uh, yeah, hundred thousand pounds in the first year. I was overwhelmed. <laughs> um, there should thank you. There should be a little line under that saying it went to rat shit in year two. <laughs> it went really, really quiet, and I was just like, oh god, what's happening? Why, why, you know, don't people like it anymore? But it's going back up now, and then events have picked up as well. So this year. This year, I'm probably on track to make about half of that. Um, but if October keeps going the way it's going, I'm probably going to hit it again because it's going mental uh, with events. Um, so, yeah, four player home again uh, events. And the biggest win, which is a bit of a cheese sandwich. I wish I had a picture of you up there. That was amazing, that getting serious. <laughs> I liked that a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> can we go back? Um, but, you know, I left the police. I was, I was, I was, well, I was mentally ill. I was severely depressed. I was on two different kinds of depres uh, depression medication. I was on five or six pills a day. And I just couldn't see the point in, in continuing. Um, I quit the police thinking, oh, I've got this little events business. I can do this, this and this. And then COVID hit. And I thought, oh, fucking hell. This is a, this is a sign. This isn't supposed to be. Um, and then things started going well. And, you know, like anyone with depression, when things start going well, you start thinking, oh, God, when is it going to go to rat shit again? So um, I phoned Alex <laughs> and I was like, this is going really well, um, but I don't know what's going on. I don't actually know why it's going well. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, he was lovely, read the book, wore the T-shirt, backed out because <laughs> I was scared that I didn't have at the time we spoke I was living on about two or three pounds a day because I was still doing the plants hadn't quite released the game yet but I knew I needed help all of a sudden a month later it went whoa so I phoned back hiya are you pissed off with me <laughs> um, and joined up and it was the best thing I've done it's the best thing I've done because I was so unhappy I was so paranoid I hated people so much just because of the whole police experience because of the lack of support experience because of feeling just got at the whole time even though you know you're not you're just part of a machine and the machine's shit 
um, you still sort of take it personally. So I kind of vowed that I was never going to trust anyone again. I was never going to have a relationship again. I was never going to have friendships again. I'm just going to be on my own and with my dogs because they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and they are. Not so good at stairs, but they are amazing. Um, but really quickly, gosh, so, so quickly. And it's, it's not my nature at all to trust people. I don't like people. I'm not good with people. <laughs> but really quickly, it was so apparent that actually... People aren't encouraging you because they want something from you and because, you know, you do someone a favour in the police, you know you're then the favour girl and you're always going to be asked to do it again. It was people helping because they actually wanted to help and the sharing of the wins is so important because you could literally put in the group, I think, I got up today <laughs> and there'd be at least 10 or 15 people, yay, did you shower? Yay. <laughs> and just something, you know, when, you, when you're head down in the business and you're completely, oh, just something like, um, Lorna, I don't even remember our first accountability lessons and me constantly stapling paper together because I didn't even have time to stop for the accountability sessions. I had three printers going in my kitchen at any one time. I was constantly making up documents, making up the game sets, just trying to keep up with the demands. And Lorna said, why, why don't you get a printer to do that? And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> why don't I get a printer to do that? So now I barely, as soon as I've written the games, I barely touch them again. It's, it's pretty amazing. But just having that, someone stepping back, because I know, you know, I see Lucia's eyes rolling back in her head quite frequently <laughs> when I'm draining on about the business. Um, and it is, it's hard. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not slagging you off yet. Um, you know, it's, it's really hard when you're getting into the minute eye and like, tr you know, stressing over the cost of staples and stuff. It's really good to actually have a, a group of people who are there as well. And, and something stupid like, you know, having your own email address in your business name. Nobody else that hasn't been through the process knows how amazingly exciting that is to have that and to get the, the email back saying you're a, you're a limited company now. It's, um, it's mind-blowing and it's, it's so good to be able to share it with kind of like-minded people. Um, I'm going to move on before I get too cheesy. <laughs> so how's life changed? Uh, I work even harder. My God, I've never stopped working. I have not stopped working. This is the first night I've been away in two years that I haven't brought the laptop. <laughs> which is, considering it was going to be jettisoned into the sea a number of times over the last year, um, I've learned my lesson. I've got more time when it's most needed. Um, being able to just put things down when uh, Lucy's mum got poorly, my own mum's not particularly very well at the minute, so being able to literally just drop everything and go rather than having to pick up the phone and be nice to someone in HR is uh, just amazing. I've got a lot more money now, uh, plus I'm investing for the future, which is... Uh, not just a police pension, that I'm kind of, does it exist, doesn't it exist? Um, and I, I, I just, I was at rock bottom when I left the police. I didn't have any confidence. I couldn't do anything whatsoever. Yet now I'm kind of standing up in front of rooms full of 70, 80 people doing events and leading them and, you know, actually being able to engage with the process rather than just being, Whoa. Um So just being in this process and just having that kind of touch points of, actually, yeah, you're doing really well, or, or whatever. It's so, so important. And genuinely, I, God, life was awful two years ago. Life was so hard. I didn't want to be in it. I didn't want to do it anymore. I ended up being supported by the crisis team, who were wonderful, wonderful people, and them and my lovely dogs, and Lucy, the cat, and, of course, Lucia, <laughs> are the reason that I'm still here today. But I'm genuinely enjoying life as well. It's... Uh, it's mental to be able to say it, but I'm really, really enjoying myself. Um, oh, God, top tips. God, I carried on. <laughs> I put some time into this, didn't I? Look at this. <laughs> so, uh, stop her accepting horrendous situations. Uh, focus on getting away from them. So, exactly, get away from the police. It's shit. Uh, you don't need to be doing it. There's life out there. Um, and the same, you know, with the franchisee. She just wanted money. She didn't uh, want to actually help. Oh, gosh. Okay. Perhaps I was drinking when I did this. Uh, in a world full of wankers, remember, not everyone's bad. <laughs> um, there definitely are stupid questions. I know you say quite often there's no stupid questions. There really are stupid questions. But ask them anyway, because people are going to be laughing behind a the screen. They're not going to do it to your face. They're not going to do it here today. <laughs> so ask them anyway. It doesn't matter. You're still going to get the answer. Um, and ma yeah, make your own progress on your own time scales. I'm constantly press um, pressuring myself to... Oh, I should have been doing this, I should have been doing that. My stock should have arrived at Walmart already, but actually, you know. <laughs> Who's going to tell me off? <laughs> um, trust the right people, and by that I do mean you guys. It's, um, it's so hard to find 
people that don't want something from you. And, and as I'm kind of venturing out into the business world, it's very difficult to make those connections and make the right connections. But actually, it's not just people in this room. There are lots of good people out there as well. And it, it's a real kind of bombshell moment for me to, to see that and realise that, that there's a lot of good people out there. Um, I have fun and make mistakes. Everyone's ridiculous in the end. Everyone is absolutely ridiculous. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you're happy and not upsetting anyone else. Um, my, my toppest tip, actually, that I didn't bother to put on there, is the more people you talk to, the better. The relationships I've made just by saying, oh, this is what I do, this is what I do, this is what I do. And then the phone calls that come back in. And when I've kind of referred people on and made introductions, not because there's anything in it for me, but just, oh, you, your business might help, you'll, you know. It's huge, and that's how I just got the Amazon job. That's how I'm working now for two big events companies who I outsource to with my CSI events. Um, just don't stop talking about it, even if you see the eyes rolling. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Very proud of you. Thank you. There you go. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh, here's your. Thank you.